I'm Robert Wallace. I teach literature here at NKU, and the book is 13 Women Strong, The Making of a Team. As I wrote the book, I found that a lot of Emily Dickinson's poetry was speaking to what I saw in the court and in the practices. So um, I ended up using a couple epigraphs, and then I ended up using quite a few. And the first one that came to mind is one of my favorite poems of hers, I Took My Power in My Hand and Went Against the World. And these women are playing basketball with their hands, shooting, passing, and all that. And I just thought, this is what they're doing. So uh, other things came along, like uh, the tough year that I wrote about um, did not go the way everyone expected. So for the chapter that began that, I used the little uh, first line of poem, experience is an angled road. It wasn't the straight line we thought we were going to have. Well, I think every year is an entity unto itself. So, you know, um, every year you have different challenges. This year's team, uh, you know, was similar to many of the teams that I've had. We were uh, young in the beginning of the year or inexperienced. We had some parts that were uh, experienced and some parts that were new. And, you know, the season is, is, is kind of like a daily grind of trying to uh, come together as a team and prepare yourself for the moment when you play the game. So, you know, the games are only 40 minutes long and you spend so much time outside. And I think preparing for those games is, uh, is probably a, com is, is a uh, accumulation of everything that you do, not just practice, but time you spend together, getting to know each other. So the season is similar to all the other seasons from that standpoint, and then just putting it all together and going through the ups and downs of the years and trying to play your best basketball at the right time. And I think that's what this team did uh, in particular. Coach Winstall is the same game day, practice day, which is something that's really great. Um, if you want a break from the intensity, you shouldn't come here. Um, she's definitely intense all the time, but her promise is that she'll make you the best player she possibly can. So whether you feel like it or not that day, she's going to push you. And I really like that. Uh, the year I took for the book, I followed the team through the off season, the preseason, all the practices, and I saw how it works day by day. And uh, how hard they have to work, their passion for the game, how they compete with each other and still love each other at the same time. There's some really complicated dynamics that go on. You know, they're team oriented, but within the team, uh, there's a lot of contradictions to what I say probably because within a team, you have to be willing to achieve at your level too. So you want to be part of a team, but if you're the best player, by gosh, you're the best player and you probably should be shooting the ball more than somebody else. So everybody has to understand that within the team concept, it's not necessarily all a democracy. And so as the coach, you sort of have to work within those confines, which is, uh, to me, uh, a, a very interesting psychological phenomena, but that is what you work with. And so as a coach, you try to prepare your players to, to for that 40 minute play, you know, and whether it's through practice, whether it's through whatever you do. Beating Bellarmine here, that's a rival there, like the closest school to us, I think, um, for the seniors on the senior night was really fun. And then we beat Lewis, who was like really good that year. And I think that's when we started winning a lot in the postseason, so. Yeah, we have a, it's called a faculty group. Uh, when Winstall started coaching, uh, we got quite a crowd that would come to every game. And we travel some of the away games too um, when there are special games. And uh, in the early years, there weren't a lot of people coming to women's games. I mean, it, it took a long time to build up the kind of audience we have now. And I remember early on when uh, our teams always played double headers, the women's game and then the men's. And when we got in the conference, they were always double headers like that in the GLVC conference. and. I'd turn on uh, the radio in the morning to find out what score was, and they'd say, well, NKU won by this or that score, and it was always the men's score. They didn't even say what the women's team did. Um, so uh, for a long time, it, uh, the team was not getting the attention it deserved. But, so it was kind of fun to be there supporting them uh, when we needed it. But you know, even then, the quality of play was so high. Women's 
college basketball, uh, top tier division two where we are, it's a very high level of play. Students are, are very proficient. Uh, they're playing a team game with passing and defense and um, a real system that, that Winslow uses. And it really is the way a lot of us feel the game should be. So um, it's a great pleasure to uh, every year see who's on the floor and to watch her coach them. I'm the type of coach that I run a pretty specific system. Um, it's interesting because I've had people say, you know, we, we run a lot of double post and single post sets. Sometimes we'll run a 5 a.m. motion where every five spots are interchangeable. But I've had people say to me, you know, Winstall, you run the same things over and over for all these years. And we tweak it a little bit. But honestly, Bill, if, if, if it ain't broke, why fix it? And so I'm the type, basketball is a game of adjustments. So if something isn't going well, you've got to be smart enough to change it. You know, I would rather win than be right. So some coaches would rather be right than win, but I would rather win than be right. So if I have to make an adjustment or if my coaching staff needs to make an adjustment during the course of a game, we will do that. But on the other hand, uh, sometimes I believe it's not what you run, it's how you run it. Yes, I this book was accepted for publication in December of 2007, and the new team was still struggling a little bit, but by February they started going pretty well, and I thought maybe there'd be a good postseason. So I sent an email to the director of the press and said, you know, if anything exciting happens, could I add it to the book? And he said, yes. Well, it turns out they go to the NCAA, then win the Great Lakes Regional, and, and they win the national championship. So. Uh, I wrote a full chapter as the concluding chapter which deals with this amazing year and tremendous achievement. And I think what I found really interesting, I, I went out to Nebraska to uh, see that tournament. It was very exciting to be there. All three games were really exciting. A lot of people who see this probably saw the final on TV. And um, what I found kind of interesting in adding this to an already concluded concluded book was that I only had to change a couple sentences in the previous nine chapters because really everything that happened and especially the leadership from Angela Healy and Nicole Chiodi, the past juniors who are now the senior co-captains, um, everything that happened during that difficult previous year was preparing them for the leadership and attainment they achieved this year. So it really was more seamless than I thought. I was afraid I'd have to tear some things up, but it didn't turn out to be that way. The, in my opinion, between 2000 and 2008, the number of people that saw the 2008 game is overwhelming. I cannot tell you how many people, the Northern Kentucky community and the greater Cincinnati community, a lot of people saw that and it really helped to put NKU on the map in, a, in even a bigger way than it's been. I mean, there's a lot of things going on at this university. We're growing leaps and bounds. And I would like to think that that being on TV has kind of helped that a little bit. But nationally, I've, I've come across people, you know, I was in Florida on the beach walking a pier, a fishing pier. Me and there were two other people there and I happened to have an NKU t-shirt on. And, and a dad was with his child and he said, hey, are you the coach at NKU? And I said, yeah. And he says, I watched that game. And I'm like, I can't even believe it. Here I am out in the middle of nowhere, basically. And uh, so things like that have been happening to us, not just myself, but to the team. And that's a fun thing to know, especially when you're from the area, that people watch the game, but they also have had just very kind things to say about the game. The title of the book is uh, 13 Women Strong, and the 13 women are Coach Winstall and the 12 players in the 2006-07 season.